Should we eat the same way as our ancestors did? It's a very good question. And there are a few layers to it, so let's, let's peel them back. Um, now, some would argue, I made a separate video on the uh, appeal to nature fallacy. If you're not familiar with it, it's, it's the, the idea that saying that uh, just by saying something's natural makes it good and okay and right. Um, now, a lot of things that are natural are good and okay and right. I and mean, nature's actually pretty damn good at, at getting stuff, doing stuff pretty well. Um, but there is such a thing as the appeal to nature fallacy. This, this I don't think, is, is one of them. Um, and as I explained in, in that video, the, uh, the healthiest diet or healthiest way of eating for any, any species is what that species has always ate, right? By definition. How do we know that? Because they're here. Because they've thrived. These are the ones that have thrived through natural selection or, or whatever, whatever else, you know? So what, what have humans always eaten? We know this hands down, no question about it, the meat and fat of large animals. Okay, the, the basic story goes that our ancient, ancient pre-ancestor Australopithecus afarensis, or some Australopithecine, um, kind of in a previous ice age when uh, the, uh, the, the, the middle of the planet, the tropical areas dried out when, because when you get a lot of, uh, when you get ice sheets in the Northern hemisphere, it removes a lot of available water out of the water cycle. So actually the tropics tend to dry out during an ice age. And these guys, these guys over here, our friends, the trees, they, uh, they have a, a high water requirement. They need a lot of water because uh, they've got these permanent roots that go very deep into the ground. Their roots go strong, my lord. You know? And when it dries out, trees don't, don't fare very well. They, they need a lot, you know, they like nice deep soil that can ab absorb a lot of water. And they like regular rainfall. They also help create rainfall as well, which is good. But when things dry out, generally over, over a period of time, then your trees tend to die down and, and give way to another type of plant that actually copes much, much better with, um, with dry conditions. And we are talking, of course, about the grasses. Now, grasses are very different to, very different to trees. Grasses have unique abilities. I mean, for, for one thing, they're much smaller. Okay, their roots go down uh, a lot less, a lot less far into the ground. And plus they have the ability to adapt to changes in available water. So they can actually slough off roots. They can drop their roots to reduce their own water requirement. And they can almost like go into water hibernation and wait for the rains to come back, which is why you see, you know, like the, the African savanna when there's a, a dry period, the grass all looks dead and brown and then it rains and then ping, it all springs back to life. Okay, so what were we talking about? So Australopithecus, um, found that their normal jungle habitat was kind of declining and uh, retreating and uh, they had been used to doing what gorillas do and chimps do which is basically lounge around all day with no look if, if I could eat leaves right and stems and stalks I'd be laughing here because you know if I was a gorilla I'd just go munch 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 they spend like 20 hours of each day eating and resting, because it's heavy work digesting all of that plant matter. Um, I'm not a gorilla, and I'm not a herbivore, so I can't actually eat the leaves of these limes or sycamores and stuff around me, yeah? So uh, Australopithecus went out into the, into the savannah and found a new source of food, apparently, which was uh, the, the carcasses of large animals that had been killed by predators. And so what they did was they, because also they had longer, longer thumbs and short fingers like, like I do. Look at this, I've got, that is a relatively long thumb in ape terms and little stub, stubby fingers. Now these are not very good for swinging from trees. I'm not very good at swinging from trees, but what I am good at is holding things, right? Look at this, my long thumb helps me to hold things like sticks, and rocks. So uh, they picked up rocks and they smashed into bones and they smashed into skulls, 
which even the hyenas couldn't get into and the, and the uh the vultures couldn't get into right but they and in there they found an extremely rich source of nutrition bone marrow and brain matter okay so that is how um anthrop anthropologists think that they started the evolution into the genus homo so you get homo habilis homo erectus and then homo sapiens which is us and of course a lot of others like homo neanderthalis um so what have humans always eaten that's what we basically say well we became human according to science through eating meat and fat um particularly fat and then we shrunk our bellies we grew our big brains because you can't run a huge belly and a huge brain at the same time there aren't enough hours in the day to eat enough to run both right we wouldn't get any sleep so it's, it's kind of a one or the other thing and then from there we created fire we created um projectile weapons so we could we could hunt by throwing rocks at stuff and sharpened sticks at stuff we created hand tools and then eventually we created the spear the spear thrower and the bow and arrow and uh you know we became the most efficient hunters the world has ever seen so what have what have humans always eaten we've always eaten meat and fat and we've supplemented it with some other stuff particularly if times were hard you know we might dig up a tuba or whatever um so what were we talking about <laughs> should we eat the way that our ancestors have eaten well if you accept it as a truth that uh whatever food a species has, has always eaten and as far as while we've been the genus homo we've always eaten meat and fat then yes we should eat meat and fat and we we know this go on you go up there you sound like a steam train right we know this for for many reasons because meat and fat meat and fat provide all the the nutrition that we need they provide the perfect a uh, range of amino acids in the proteins and the and the fatty acids that we need and the DHA and the EPA that are essential and that we can't make ourselves because we don't need to because we're hunters uh, and that you can't also can't really get from the animal for, sorry from the, the plant kingdom with the exception of some marine algae and I'm pretty sure that our ancestors did not manage to find a way to harvest marine algae so the next question then is well but do we need to continue to do that? Because aren't, aren't we evolving? We've got all this technology. We're, we've made all these great things like guns and uh, space shuttles and stuff like that. And MR, MRI scanners and stuff. Well, I mean, biologically, yeah, I mean, one thing we know about evolution is that if it works, it works damn slow. It's, you know, it takes a long time. Now, if you want to, I'm not saying you can't, if you want to identify as an australopithecine try saying that after a couple of whiskies if you want if you want to identify as a pre-human herbivore frugivore whatever go ahead knock yourself out pretend to be whatever you want to be i don't care right it doesn't make you one just because you say i'm a herbivore i'm a frugivore yeah you can do that knock yourself out but you can't use that as an argument to say that everyone can or everyone should because that's just not the way that, that we're made. You know, we've, we've lost the ability, if we ever had it, to generate our own short-chain fatty acids and amino acids out of big colonies of bacteria in our gut. It's just the way it is. Um, can we use technology to replace that stuff? Well, that is a possibility. It is a possibility. It is, is it, it's a possibility that we could grow meat in a lab um, out of mushrooms and stuff like that. Now, there's a lot of very clever people working on stuff like this right now. It's, it's a possibility, and it? We may find a way to provide all of our, you know, aminos and fatty acids that we need that way as well. Go on, steam train. Yeah? But should we? Well, what's wrong with nature's way? Honestly, what's wrong... What's wrong with having animals? What's wrong with killing animals and eating animals, right? If we didn't do that, we wouldn't have animals. And that's a whole nother, whole nother topic. So um, bottom line is, should we eat what our ancestors ate? Yes, in terms of 
we need the same essential nutrients as, as they have always had. Otherwise, we will suffer. Our health suffers. We know this. Um, how we go about that? Well, my vote is for to use close to nature's way. When and my vegan friends would say, "Oh, but that's it's unnatural." You know, you're talking about nature, and then you're keeping, you're imprisoning cows in fields and stuff like that. Well, yes, we do. You know, we 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 have captive, uh, domesticated breeds that that we've help to create ourselves maybe maybe not they could survive in nature on their own does it make it unnatural well depends whether you take the fundamental view that that humans aren't part of nature i believe we are i believe that human technology is a part of nature um and because of that it, it has to be subject to nature's laws, which, like we say, are unavoidable and will catch up on, it, on us eventually. So, yeah, there you go. Um, as we know, the whole, all the ethical questions are, are very convoluted and, uh, and tricky. And that's why, that's why I'm here. That's what, what my work is, to try and, try and help us uh, figure out a way through all that. But yeah. I, I go towards, I, in pretty much all things, I go, I trust nature, I trust Mother Nature, or God's design, or however you want to think about it. I think it's worked well for an awful long time. And the more I look at the, the efforts that, that mankind makes to try and improve on nature's uh, weaknesses, we don't seem to do a very good job of it. So I'll stick with nature for now. But uh, never know, might change my mind one day.